Okay, thank you. Um, hello, everyone. I'm George Brooks from EY, formerly known as Ernst & Young. And uh, along with my partners and colleagues, uh, we're very excited to introduce two things today. One is we're going to introduce uh, the launch of a collaborative relationship with the, the uh, Nantucket Project around the future of work. And second, I get to introduce um, Roger Martin, who's going to launch that conversation for us. But let me spend just a couple of minutes on the future of work. I think future of work is going to be the most disruptive things in the workplace that happened, ever happened in any generation. We're going to go through such dramatic change. And I think you've seen some of that uh, throughout the day. Um, what's changing? Let's look first at the workforce. We have the advent of the millennials. In a couple of years, millennials will be over 50% of our workforce. Over 50% of our new hires are going to be women and students. We have four generations working together, and we have a whole new group of employees called contingent workers who are working for lower wages, no benefits, and diving to the bottom to just get a job. We have some new constraints. Our birth rates are down. We're only having 2.1 children per family, which means for the first time in the history of our country, our population is going to decline. We have limitations on immigration, which means there's going to be fewer technical people coming in, and um, possibly the introduction of a cross-border tax, which means everything we're offshoring will probably become onshored. A lot of changes there to drive in the workplace. Um, robotics, we talked about artificial intelligence earlier. I like to call it augmentation instead of um, automation. I think the majority of the automation, there's three types of changes to jobs. One is jobs are being replaced, um, but that's a low percentage, about 20%. About 70% of automation deals with the augmentation, or about 70% of a job, and the human still needs to participate in that role. And then last, there's plenty of new jobs being created. The challenge is, for the first time in history, we don't have enough time to train for these new jobs. We have new business models. We're moving towards team-based models. Old functional hierarchies are giving way to horizontal structures so people can work together, inspire, and be innovated. And learning and skill development, unlike any time before, an example is at and They need 100,000 people to become technically enabled to implement their new strategy, which now they're just declared they're spending $1 billion on training their workforce. So when you look at, and I'm just touching on just the high level changes, um, we want to look at it in an inspirational way. There are fear mongers. Fear mongers are saying jobs are disappearing, but if we can train fast enough, they'll be there. Um, second, techno stress. This is for real. This is you, you being tied to your phone, your computer, 24-7, that expectation of being on call all times, seven days, and being fed and posting social media. How many people feel more stressed than ever? How many people are having a hard time sleeping at night? How many people are getting foggy? Are you forgetting things? I don't know how many times I get on the train to go home and I drove. <laughs> That's techno stress, right? How about, how many people here know more than five phone numbers memorized? More than five, that's pretty good. We have a lot of people that practice mind clarity. Digital dementia, right? We are, there's parts of our brain that are atrophying because we're not using them, we're not memorizing. Empathy, way down, because we're pushing our conversations through mechanical devices. We don't have that person-to-person -person experience. Empathy is on a decline. Technology is killing empathy. But at the same time, we need empathy more than ever in our businesses to work together, to team, to be inspired, and to provide improved customer service. So with that, I'm running out of time. Um, I want you to imagine a good world, a world where we will work to make an inspired workplace for all these new types of employees. 
Um, there is the opportunity to do better on the inclusion side on DNI by activating it through working on a common purpose in an organization. Um, we do have an opportunity to tap a labor market that's available and waiting. I am a board of director on a company called Strive in Harlem, and we place 70,000 people out of jails and out of Harlem and off the streets into jobs. Um, we, we have the magic formula to give a sense of accountability, self-worth, and technical training to work. And their kids now are going to Ivy League schools. Um, and I think there's an opportunity to work together um, better with design thinking, working horizontal. And then with that, I think to succeed in the digital age, you need to get back to human in the workplace. So with that, our firm, Ernst Young, our purpose is to build a better working world and to provide a path forward that's different than we did before to navigate through this in a way that improves your lives, improves the customer's experience, and then last, improves the business's results. Um, so let's begin this conversation. Uh, let me introduce Roger Martin. Roger is um, a strategy advisor, a former dean of the Rotman School of Management for the University of Toronto, an author who published 11 books, and I love this, Roger, he placed third on a Thinker's 50 list for business. Here we go, Roger. 